مشاهدينا نرحب بكم في هذا اللقاء الخاص الذي يجمعنا برئيس الجمعية العامة للأمم المتحدة في دورتها الثامنة والسبعين السيد دينيس فرانسيس سيد الرئيس شكرا على قبول الدعوة لنبدأ بأول سؤال طبعا الأسبوع رفيع المستوى قارب على نهايته كيف تقيمون هذا الأسبوع؟ I think we've had a successful week of activity um, and that has been manifested in the fact that we were able to adopt the declaration uh, for the SDG summit uh, which as you know is the f really the flagship uh, forum uh, for um, the activities of high level week but beyond that we were also able uh, to successfully get adopted uh, by the heads of state and government the outcome documents for the three health processes uh, namely pandemic preparedness uh, um, universal health care and uh, uh, tuberculosis. Um, the mood in the General Assembly uh, and in other places was electrifying. Uh, um, I hope that indicates uh, renewed excitement around the SDGs. Um, but certainly there is renewed commitment on the part of the United Nations. Uh, to fulfill our pledge of getting the SDGs done and delivered by 2030. خلال هذه السنة تم التركيز على التنمية المستدامة ومحاربة الفقر. كيف يمكن للمجتمع الدولي أن يقضي على هذه الظاهرة في حدود 2030؟ Well, you know. Our civilization has achieved extraordinary things when we have set our sights on getting those things done. Uh, we've sent several men to the moon. We were able to get vaccines developed over a, over a 12 month period in the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and therefore, I'm quite confident that we can get the SDGs done. Uh, what has been lacking thus far, to a significant degree, is a true spirit of solidarity. Uh, um, but I think we are bridging that gap now. Uh, and. Uh, uh, what will be necessary is to galvanize the political will among states to do what is necessary to get the SDGs done. Uh, based on all that I've seen and heard during High Level Week, uh, I believe we can do it and we will do it uh, in order to bring development to those parts of the world where it is in deficit and where people are in need of the help and support of the United Nations. وباء كورونا شارف على نهايته لكن العديد من الدول بسبب الوباء تعاني حاليا من مشكلة الأمن الغذائي. كيف يمكن للمجتمع الدولي أن يحل هذه المشكلة؟ Well, food insecurity is a complex problem. It's a complex issue faced by the international community. And it's not an event. You, you, can't, uh, you can't fix it, literally, overnight or in a week. Um, food, f getting global food security would involve a number of dimensions. There would need to be uh, increased production of food, number one. Uh, there would need to, and therefore you need expanded investment in food production. 
as you know, it takes time for crops to grow, to be brought to market, etc. Um, but also because we have a growing population on this planet, by 2050, uh, the population will be 9.5 billion people. And therefore, we need to examine practical ways uh, of feeding 9.5 billion people. Um, there are issues uh, affecting global supply chains and the availability of food. At this point in time, uh, the Black Sea Grain Initiative uh, is one such, uh, such uh, component. And it is our hope in the General Assembly um, that that facility can be restored uh, because it will help to relieve the problems of food, sh food shortages and food insecurity in many parts of the world. But it's not the only thing. Um, you know, uh, uh, that the investment in food production is critical to enhance and strengthen global food supplies. في عدة ربوع من العالم نجد مشكلة النزاعات المسلحة كيف يمكن للمجتمع الدولي أن يتدخل ويحل هذه المشكلة؟ Conflicts appear from time to time in different settings for different reasons. It is uh, we've noted in the last uh, in recent months uh, a tendency for there to be coups in Africa. Uh, which we think are, are unhelpful because it's a retrograde step. It takes the continent back to an era when coups were very rampant. Uh, people get displaced from their homes, civilians, uh, uh, creating uh, refugees that uh, are in desperate need of help and support uh, for humanitarian support. These, these components complicate the international system uh, and make it makes it more difficult uh, uh, to deal with these issues. Uh, migration is a huge, displacement of people and migration is a huge um, outcome of, uh, of uh, internal conflict and strife. Uh, uh, so uh, the international communi community uh, wants there to, to be peace, is willing to act as an honest broker uh, between warring factions to create the foundations for peace because it is only through uh, 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 um, times of quiet when there are no bombs dropping that you can really address the fundamental issues affecting that particular uh, uh, country and its people. Uh, good solutions that endure take time to build. So it will not be something that can happen overnight, uh, um, but it is worth every effort in doing it because lives are saved. خلال الأسبوع رفيع المستوى العديد من المسؤولين طالبوا بضرورة إصلاح مجلس الأمن والجمعية العامة من بينهم الرئيس الأمريكي جو بايدن كيف ترون ضرورة إصلاح الأمم المتحدة سواء على مستوى الجمعية العامة أو حتى على مستوى مجلس الأمن؟ To answer your question about where reform is required. Uh, you, I'm sure you're aware that reform of the Security Council has been talked about uh, for several decades, actually. Uh, in the last uh, couple of years, it has taken up a renewed momentum. Um, and uh, uh, there is the question, of course, of the composition of the, co of the Council. The view exists strongly in the House in several places that the Council, as it was established in 1945, is not fit for purpose in the 21st century, that it must, the Council must more accurately reflect the composition of international society and the new political dynamics, the new geopolitics 
of the 21st century, which is more of a mul multipolar world rather than a bipolar world as existed in 1945. And also that the council uh, should be perhaps more agile, uh, more flexible in being able to meet uh, the demands of the moment um, in a world where things are very fast moving. But it is not just the council that needs reform. The, the General Assembly uh, also has a discussion about re its own revitalization. That process has been taking place. There's been a committee working on it um, with good results uh, that the General Assembly will take up again this year and perhaps next year. And then there's also been um, agreement that there should be reform of the Economic and Social Council. So um, reform of the UN is not an event. It's a continuum. It's a process. You know? And um, let's not overlook that uh, this has been going on seamlessly for several, several years. Uh, for example, when 911 happened and the, the aircraft hit the towers, um, the UN responded by setting up the global counterterrorism strategy. Mm. It did not exist before. Um, and there are several examples of that that has taken place. However, root and branch reform of the institutional bodies uh, uh, is where uh, the issues have arisen and there is a deep commitment on the part of the General Assembly that we should make uh, meaningful progress, strong progress uh, on bringing those organizations, uh, preparing them to and better equipping them to deal with the complex issues of our times. العديد من الدول الفقيرة في شتى ربوع العالم تدفع ثمن تغير المناخي كيف يمكن للأمم المتحدة أن تساهم في حل هذه المشكلة؟ Urgent action is required in COP28 to address these issues. Uh, um, when we say as developing countries, SIDS and uh, LDCs that climate change is an existential issue. This is not an exaggeration. This is not, uh, it's not cliche. Uh, I come from the Caribbean and I can tell you every year come July, between July and October, people in the Caribbean are living in anxiety because we know that the Atlantic uh, hurricane season is coming and everyone is wondering who is going to be hit. It's not a question of when, it's who is going to be hit, which country, and how devastating will it be? Uh, having to rebuild basic infrastructure, schools, hospitals, uh, police stations. Uh, you can't be doing this repeatedly if you want to achieve sustainable development. And that has been the history of, of, of the Caribbean, having to rebuild roads, uh, schools, uh, uh, hospitals, rehabilitate housing. These are small islands. You can't, where do you go? There's nowhere to run and hide. Um, so uh, it's extremely urgent that this COP meaningfully address and make progress on climate change. Extremely so. Uh, and um, uh, I'm told by the hosts of COP28 uh, that this will be a game-changing COP. I wish them every success, uh, but we do need a game-changer with climate change. نحن في سنة 2023 ولكن العديد من الأطفال خاصة البنات وحتى النساء يمنعنا من التعليم والدراسة أفغانستان مثال على ذلك كيف يمكن للأمم المتحدة أن تحل هذه المشكلة؟ That's a very unfortunate thing, extremely unfortunate. 
the value of education is that it opens the mind. It liberates the individual uh, and gives them a sense of achievement and a sense of pride. Uh, um, it's very unfortunate, that situation that you've described uh, in Afghanistan and in other parts of the world where women and girls in particular are denied the right to an education. The first thing I'd like to say on this is that it is a fundamental human right. There's no doubt about it. It's a fundamental human right, the right to an education. And in that sense, it is almost at the same level as the right to food, to nutrition, as a basic human right. Um, but denying half of the population this right means that they are not allowed to play the role that they can play in their, in their society, in their communities, to add value to society. Uh, and that is not a good thing. Uh, women's empowerment and gender equality is an extremely important dimension of this presidency. We are promoting it everywhere we are go, we go, because it is simply not acceptable that in the 21st century such discriminatory practice practices are entrenched and happening in various parts of the world. It, it is not right. Uh, women, women are our mothers and sisters. They deserve respect. They've earned the respect. And so uh, um, my hope is that the authorities in Afghanistan will rethink uh, that policy and uh, allow young children, young girls to get an education. It will benefit Afghan society enormously if that happened because I'm sure that those girls will want to make a contribution to their society when they become adults. Uh, and that is uh, one of the greatest honors that an individual can have, to give back to society that which society gave to you. Uh, I hope that they will reconsider it uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, do a course correction with respect to that policy. السيد دينيس فرانسيس شكرا جزيلا على هذا اللقاء Thank you. إلى هنا ينتهي هذا اللقاء الخاص الذي جمعنا برئيس الجمعية العامة للأمم المتحدة في طبعتها الثامنة والسبعين السيد دينيس فرانسيس إلى أن نلتقي في لقاءات أخرى